And that's why we printed the bolt from Lethal Company. Give me that, we don't need that. Guess what we've got? A 3D printer? Yup, it's the Creality Ender, Ender 3v3. Creality's first foray into Core XZ printing. I can't wait to see how fast it prints. Let's go ahead and unbox it. We have not done one of these yet, so we have no idea what we're about to see, but we're very excited. ASMR. <laughs> oh, there it goes. So we've got our handy dandy user manual. And don't forget folks, all these Creality printers nowadays, they come with some fantastic stickers. We got some sample filament. That'll be enough to get you a benchy or two, but not much else. It's pretty great though. And what do we have here? Well, I actually don't know what that is. We'll find out in a minute. Looks like we got a little bit of PTFE tubing. I'm guessing that's gonna help us get the filament to, to the head. Yep. I think so. It and should be a, a direct drive printer, so. Yep. Filament holder. What's in there, bud? Let's find out. Uh, like it looks like we got some nozzle cleaning tools, some zip ties, and some other tools. Cool. Set that here. Another piece to the spool holder. Oh, very nice. And then I don't know if this screen, I'm guessing it's gonna come out. Yep. We've got the screen here. I think this is probably very close, if not the same screen that comes on the K1 series. It does appear that way, yeah. Let's go ahead and get this first layer out. That's pretty clean. Yeah, it seems like this is very well packaged. All right, got. Here's this. And actually, if you look here, you have both of these motors are what's going to control both the side to side and the Z movement. This is the Core XZ motion system. It's very similar to what is on the K1, except on its side. Very interesting. Let's get some more foam out of there. Oh, nice. We've oh, very got a nice textured PEI bed right out of the gate. And then let's see what this piece is. I am not sure what that is yet. We'll figure that out in a little bit. It looks 3D printed, which is actually pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get rid of that box. Oh, very nice. I think this is metal. Yeah. Plugs in at the back, that's nice. Oh, and you don't have to turn it upside down, I don't think. No. It looks like it's going to attach on the sides. Cabling looks pretty straightforward. Not too many things to plug in. So let's go ahead and start assembling it. Absolutely. Cool. I think we just slide this guy in here. If I can get it. Oh, there we go. This may be one of the easiest printers to put together. Looks like there's really not too, too many screws at all. We're gonna use the included Allen wrenches for this. I think that will fit if it doesn't. That's it. All right. Looks like to assemble the upper gantry, it's just gonna be four bolts. You mind taking a look at the manual and make sure I'm not gonna miss anything. Absolutely. It actually looks like we're gonna have some more bolts coming from the bottom as well. Okay. Please ensure the correct position for the power supply switch, which is where? In the back. Well, one would think. It's right here. It's not. Well, it's off. Oh, okay. I think it's talking about the, um, so maybe we're not, we need to follow the steps before we do it, because I yeah. think it might cover up. Oh, see what I, I see mean? what you're saying. Yes, yes, yes. So we got a little ahead of ourselves, but you should always RTFM. Yes, read don't the, be like me. Read the fabulous manual. Yep, it's over on this side. So we will take a smaller guy. Make sure it's at 115. All right, now that we've done that, now I believe we can install the upper gantry. Mm -hmm. Four bolts uh, from the front and four from the bottom. Man, this thing feels solid. It really does. And I'm glad they put that sticker on there. In fact, they put the sticker on so that you can't install those other two without reading it first. That's a good way to do that. So what do you want to print first on this? I would like to print something fast. 
So my default kind of go-to is whatever's already on the card. Mm -hmm. But I think to really test the speed, maybe what we'll print is some sort of vase Ooh. or vase. Depending on where you're from. Right. So as we turn this over, we're gonna make sure that we're not pinching any cables anywhere. And we're gonna gently set this down. Two on each side. Mm -hmm. Check out these nice rubber feet Those too. Those are very nice. I bet that'll help a lot with sound dampening. I think so. Actually, if you look here, I think that this is going to be the uh, the motor for the bed, so the Y axis here. And as always, when you're putting on like the upper gantry on 3D printers, it's good not to completely tighten every single screw and leave a little bit of wiggle room and then go back around to all of them at the end once you've gotten them all basically tightened. So at this point, this machine feels pretty robust. We've got six screws into it and it's pretty much all together mechanically. What do we need to do next? I think all we need to do is plug in some of these motors and then put the PTFE tube in. Okay, we need to put the screen on and then oh. mount the uh, thing. The spool holder. Spool holder as well. There's yeah, a I mean, spool holder there. check this out. So this spool holder, like Jacob just did, goes in, twists the lock, and then no screws or hardware necessary because you've got these two keyhole style bolts down here. Boom. Again, we should be reading the manual, but I think this is actually going to go on in reverse here. It does look that way, yes. Because the spool will feed into the back here. And we'll turn this around here in a minute and show you a little bit of what's going on in the back. Why don't we do that now and connect some of these cables up? Absolutely. So let's talk about what we're gonna connect. Over here, we've got the X limit switch, which we're gonna plug into a female down here. And as always with a lot of these things, it's keyed. So it should only go in one way. And then we are going to plug in one of what I believe is the Z motor. Nope, I lied. This is the X motor, according to that little indicator there. Over on this side, we have the Z motor, and it plugs in right here. It's keyed, like Andy just said. And then one thing we've noticed already on this machine is this engineered strain relief that is going to the heated bed. So that's gonna carry uh, the power that it requires to actually heat up the elements underneath the bed. That looks pretty robust, so it should heat the bed evenly, we're hoping, depending on the pattern that is under there, um, and that cable should do well over time. Another thing that we were kind of noticing, uh, I'll explain as I'm uh, putting the D. Whoa, this is the uh, filament runout sensor here. Uh, and then the head, it's just two plugs, real simple. One of the reasons that I'm very excited about this printer is that it is so robust in its frame. Normally bed slingers or Cartesian style printers don't have to be that robust because they move quite a bit slower. But with the speeds that this thing can hit, you really want it to be robust. And that's really all that. Wow, this is a very simple setup. Yep. I think we've got a couple more things to yeah. do. I think we've got to do the screen. I think yes. we've got to do the strain relief over here. So we found those that came out. Let's go see oh, how yes, easy it is yes. to install that. And we do need to use some PTFE tubing, I believe, going yes. from the head to the filament runout sensor. Boom, that just clips in right there. And then these will actually, before we plug that in, oh, it's a little late. we'll run that through here so that it can clip on to the strain relief. Oh. So let's go ahead and remove this tape. So these are tricky sometimes just because they're uh, intricate connectors. So I'm gonna pull it up as close as I can, tilt it up just a little bit, make sure it's keyed in right, and then push it in. You'll hear some clicks. Give it another push or two just to make sure it's there. And then we're gonna slide these two pieces into the holes right there and slide it down. And the screen should be installed. I believe that's everything. I'm just double checking the manual. Yeah, let's install some filament and print something. All right, let's go ahead and plug it in and turn it on. Thank you as always for this filament. However, we're gonna be using inland. Some inland filament. Oh, that was nice. That was a good one. You can hear the freshness. 
All right. We've got some very nice PLA Plus gray. That's a nice gray, actually. I really do like that gray. So we're about to run some initial setup things, but because we think it's going to be doing some input shaping stuff, we've gone ahead, Jacob's gone ahead and put the spool on the spool holder there. Now we're going to click next on the language English. There is a privacy policy and a preface that we won't read. I do agree to everything. Next, we're going to skip setting up the network for now. We might come back and attach it to our 3D lab network. And we are going to try to remember which time zone we're in at the moment. I think it's UTC 5. EST, next. All right, create a cloud binding, international. What are our choices? Mainland China or international? Well, we are international in that case. And it's going to do a self-check. So welcome to the self-check process. Let's start detecting. Do not touch the printer during self-check. All right, the self-check is complete. We're gonna go ahead and click OK, and then we're gonna try to figure out how to load the filament here. I think we're gonna do that by going in and selecting the hot end, taking it up to 212, sounds like a good number for me, and hitting OK. We'll watch this graph here as the hot end starts to warm up. Shouldn't take too long. It's already at 136 and soaring upwards and upwards to the beautiful number that is 212 degrees Celsius, where we will load our PLA plus. Why don't we turn the printer around a little bit just so you can get a better look at how we are going to load the filament because there's some things that you should see. So first we're gonna take this, do a 45 degree angle on the snips. We're gonna put the filament on like this with it coming underneath. And then this is the runout sensor here. So we're just gonna slide that up into that Bowden tube. And keep going, keep going, keep going. When we get up to the head, we're gonna make sure that this lock switch is going to be in the unlocked position so that we can get the filament into the correct position. There it goes, I felt it. Now we can lock it in the other direction. Unlock. And now you can't even pull it out because the extruder is holding onto it. So from the front, Jacob, can you see the menu where it's like three lines? Yep. Uh, if you hit that, there should be another menu that says extrude. We want to go ahead into that menu. Perfect. And extrude some. It should be going now. Nozzles heating. There it is. Oh yeah, that's the filament that was in it from the yep. factory. So like we said in our last video, you may start with some filament that's not the same color as the filament you loaded. That just means that they tested it with a different color at the factory. Right now we're pushing out the old stuff and we've got some gray starting to appear. There's a nice white to gray gradient happening. But I think we've successfully loaded filament on the printer. There it goes, it stopped. The parts cooling fan is cooling the nozzle which will help us get a clean pull off of this. One more second. Look at that. So what do we want to print first? All right, well, in here we have a couple of test prints, uh, a spool holder, which is interesting. Uh, I'm not sure if that's for the front or the, or the top or the side. Let's go ahead and just start with an old fashioned Benchy. Calibration, print. Well, we've printed this here Benchy and it came out pretty good for a 13 minute Benchy. What should we do next, Jacob? I think we should print a little bit more over the next couple of days and then check back with you. I think that's a great idea. We'll see you then. All right, so we've had this printer for a little while and we've been printing and I wanna ask Jacob what he thinks about the printer. Well, first things first, if when you think of Creality, you think of the original Ender 3 Pro, this machine is miles ahead. The V-rollers the v on the original Ender 3 Pro were, are fantastic for budget builds, but these linear rods are incredible for high-speed printing, and you're just gonna be so much happier with this than you would with the original. Right, and we've done a couple of different prints that you can see here, one being this vase right here, or vase, depending on how you say it. And what I was impressed with was the first layer was just absolutely perfect. Um, it's even hard to discern if you look at it closely which way the head was moving. And that's a little bit thanks to the PEI sheet here, but it's also thanks to the extrusion and making sure that enough filament's coming out as it's being laid down. Otherwise, uh, the filament, I had it do a spiralize as it went up throughout the uh, model here. And it's just a gorgeous face. Um, and that was in our Inland PLA Plus. Then we did some in our Inland PLA Matte, 
and we did this robot. And you can tell that we've got a failed print down here because his arm fell off the build plate. What we did notice is that in the Creality Slicer, their uh, initial temperature for the bed was set around 45 degrees Celsius. I know, Jacob, you said you like to keep it up around 60 or 65. Yeah. And I think typically I'll do about 55 degrees as my minimum for bed temperature for PLA. So this printer is going to be good for PLA. It's going to be good for PETG. Um, you can try ABS on it, uh, but we really like when we have these open frame bed slingers to recommend PLA, PLA plus, um, even some flexible filaments, um, and then also your pet G. But I know Jacob, you were excited about the fact that it runs uh, Clipper variant or Clipper. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a huge fan of Clipper. I think that it's the best way for you to get the most out of your printer and really dial those in. And I'm a big fan of tinkering, but I know that sometimes there are other people that don't want to tinker and this printer has it as well. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, the connectivity, the Wi-Fi that's built into the printer allows you to use the Creality print software and basically you slice your file in the software and then once you see the LAN printing button and you've got this connected to your network, you can click one click printing and it will send the file over and start it. That's a lot nicer than having to do what we used to do in the old days and carry an SD card back and forth or a USB thumb drive. Um, and then you were excited also about the parts uh, for this machine. Oh yeah, so the interesting thing about this machine is that the hot end is almost the exact same as the K1. So you should be able to change out nozzles for any K1 uh, printers or K1 Max printer nozzles. You have some really good high flow nozzles on the market for that. Yeah, and even the bed should be the same size, right, as the SE, the KE, and the K1. Absolutely. So you're gonna find some different bed variations out there already available to you as a customer. All right, so let's talk specs. Jacob, what do we know about the specs? Well, we know that it is lightning fast. This thing can go up to 600 millimeters per second at its top speed. You'll be printing at around 300 most of the time, but you know that you can go that fast, which is nice. And we also know that the accelerations are 20,000 millimeters per second. That means going from zero to 600 like nothing. It's absolutely incredible. One of the other things that I think a lot of people are gonna get a lot of use out of is the fact that it has a hardened steel nozzle, which means that you can print more abrasive materials like carbon fiber or glow in the dark stuff. Yeah, and I think because the path from the filament to the head is pretty nominal, um, you're not messing with other mechanisms or anything, that's going to help with those filaments as well. Now, we've also tested this with the Nebula camera, which we'll be selling in the stores here shortly as well. So you'll be able to add features like remote monitoring and I believe time-lapse. So stay tuned for that as well. All right, so we're really excited to get this printer out to you, the customers. What do you know about availability, Jacob? I, we're pretty sure that we're gonna have them in stock by the end of March, but make sure to check your store's availability before you go shopping for one. And also comment down below what you think is gonna be the best feature of the Ender 3 V3. Yeah, we're excited to get these to you and we can't wait to see what you print with them. And if you've made it this far in the video, make sure to hashtag I want a micro center near me if you want a micro center near you. Also, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell so you know when we post new content like this. And we will see you next time in the Maker Lab at Micro Center.